Hello and welcome to The Print. This is Akanksha Mishra. Did you know that one of the biggest problems in cosmology right now is something that's called the Hubble tension? In simple terms, it's a tension between two ways of calculating the rate at which the universe is expanding. Now, researchers at the latest meeting of the Royal Astronomical Society in Durham have proposed a solution that says that our galaxy, the Milky Way, might exist in a local void inside the universe. What does this mean and what are its implications for our understanding of the universe? Let's hear from one of the researchers himself, Dr. Indranil Banik, a cosmologist at the University of Portsmouth who recently presented his work at the National Astronomy Meeting of the RAS. Let's first start with what the Hubble tension is and how are the two different rates of expansion calculated. The Hubble tension is a uh, discrepancy between the observed rate at which the universe is expanding locally and the predicted rate at which it should be expanding if we extrapolate forward uh, observations of the early or infant universe um, forward to today um, using the standard cosmological model. So it's really a mismatch between theory and observations. Right, now regarding the actual um, physics of this. Um, let me start with the um, with the local rate of expansion, um, which is um, simpler. So for this, um, astronomers measure the distances to galaxies in the um, nearby universe uh, out to approximately uh, two billion light years. Uh, not any further um, than that. Um, the, and importantly, they measure the redshift of the galaxies. This is where the, um, all the photons in the galaxy get stretched uh, to longer wavelengths um, due to the expansion of the universe, uh, largely due to this. Uh, if you then um, plot the redshift of the galaxy uh, um, against the distance, uh, you get a, a straight line. Um, and that uh, the idea behind this is that um, if you know the distance to a galaxy, uh, when you divide that by the speed of light, that tells you how far back in time you are looking at the galaxy. And the redshift tells you how much the universe has expanded in that time. Um, regarding the early universe, um, this uh, uses the so-called afterglow of the Big Bang or the cosmic microwave background radiation, which was emitted when the universe was um 1100 times smaller than today and when it was uh, much much younger only about 400,000 years old whereas it's close to 14 billion years old today um what we use in particular are subtle temperature fluctuations in the causing microwave background radiation when we look in different directions of the sky um and uh, these reveal certain characteristic uh, angular scales at which the CMB or the cosmic microwave background is particularly noisy. So, and by looking at this very characteristic um, pattern of how noisy the CMB is on different angular scales, we can learn a great deal about the universe. It's kind of like uh, having a guitar string and it, it makes uh, much more noise at some particular frequencies um, compared to slightly smaller or larger frequencies. So uh, you, you can learn a great deal about it just by listening to it. And essentially the CMB allows a way to listen to the early universe and find out uh, what it was doing. Okay. So the um, predicted expansion rate uh, in units of kilometers per second per megaparsec, uh, which is what astronomers use, is uh, about 67.4 plus minus 0 0.5. Um, the observed rate uh, is 73.2 plus minus 0 0.9, according to the most precise estimate. Um, so the local uh, expansion rate is approximately 8% higher uh, than the predicted rate based on extrapolating from the early universe. The Hubble tension is something that's been known to scientists and cosmologists for around 7 to 8 years now. It's definitely something that has vexed them to see observations of the nearby galaxy directly counter the predictions using cosmological models. 
An article in the Scientific American even called it a Hubble crisis and not just a tension. So what is the local void theory? How does it explain this difference between the two rates and seek to resolve the difference? Yes, exactly. So we'll get, get to them in, in this order. So the local void uh, hypothesis or scenario um, postulates that the Milky Way and the local group of galaxies are in a region of the universe that is somewhat less dense than average. Um, so the idea is that um, out to a billion light years uh, from us, the that region of the universe uh, is about 20% less dense than the average for the universe as a whole. Um, so we're in a slight local under density or local hole, if you wish. Not completely empty, still 80% as dense as the average, um, but a little bit under dense. Uh, and the way this would help with the Hubble tension is that matter would flow away from the local under density uh, because there's a higher density further away. Basically, what Barnick is proposing is that the Earth, the Milky Way galaxy, and the few other galaxies that are near us within a 1 billion light year radius are inside a local void. We are in a part of the universe where the density is much lower than average, and that is why our observed rate of expansion is higher than predicted. How did Barnick and his team prove this? Well, they are using something called as baryonic acoustic oscillations of the universe. These acoustic waves, called by Barnick as the sounds of the early universe, were basically pressure waves that rippled through the early universe sometime near the Big Bang, which was around 14 million years ago. And they left their imprints, which can still be studied today. So uh, this... Um... As, as I've uh, said in some of my articles, corresponds to the uh, sound of the early universe, uh, but uh, the imprint of it in the late universe, if you will. Um, now, the way it um, works, the, the barren acoustic oscillation of BAO serves as a standard ruler. Um, it grows with the expansion of the universe, but not uh, for any other reason. So it's a relatively uh, direct probe of um, the expansion history. Um, if you imagine that uh, as you look at later and later times, uh, the rule is not only growing due to the cosmic expansion, but it's also coming closer and closer to us. Um, so as a result, there's a very particular prediction for what the angle, the angular size of the BAO ruler should be as a function of redshift. How exactly does the new model proposed by Barnick differ from existing understandings of cosmology? Well, um, this is a modification to the standard cosmological model uh, in which you would need to have structure formation on these uh, on scales greater than about 100 million light years would need to be faster than in a standard model, because otherwise you wouldn't be able to get such a large and deep void in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, so, that, so we do need to uh, modify the standard model. Obviously, if the Hubble tension could be solved without changing the physics at all, then it wouldn't really be a tension. Um, so we, we do have some new ingredients in, in terms of whether it's been criticized. Um, so of course, uh, it, it's not a problem uh, for theories to disagree with other theories. That, that's not a, a main problem. But a more important issue is whether um, our model disagrees with observations. So there you have it. The world may finally be close to a solution to the Hubble tension and the solution emerged from observing the sounds of the Big Bang. That's all we have for you today. Thank you for tuning into the print.